Hi guys! Welcome to another What I Make as a Vegan on the Slimming World. Today is going to be another meal prep video, but it's not quite a structured one because I basically went downstairs one morning in my PJs and I decided just to get cooking um, to get myself organised for the week. So what follows are three dishes that I froze some of and most of the others I kept to use throughout the week. I added salads and vegetables to them, pasta, various other things you'll see in a moment. But the three things that we're about to make are a tofu, bacon, mushroom and spinach crustless quiche, a Italian style vegetable bean and grain soup, that's really the only way I can describe it. It's not a minestrone, but it's similar without pasta. Um, and then the third thing is basically just a chickpea, aubergine and harissa dish, which is very, very basic, but it's a really good basis for quite a few meals and you could use it in loads of different ways. So it's just a really good sort of base thing to have in the fridge ready for the week. Now, before we get into making the food, I really wanted to share with you today some of the diaries that I use for Slimming World. Um, I, this video isn't sponsored, by the way, I should point that out. I've received no money, no incentives for promoting these particular diaries. What I have done is got a discount code for you guys. So if you would like to um, get yourself a diary like I've got, then head on over to fabulousplanning.co.uk and you can use the discount code that I'm going to put in the description below for you. Um, I hope that's helpful. Um, as I said, I'm not sponsored for promoting them. I just really love these diaries and I've actually used them since I started my Swimming World journey. So I just wanted to show you. So basically in a diary pack, this is what you get. Now these are the three month diaries. Um, I've ordered two this time, but one of them I'm already using, so I'm showing you the one that I haven't started. Just before I show you the diary proper, I'll show you some of the extra bits that you get with it. A fantastic pen that says, I don't know if you can see it, but it says, always believe in yourself. You get this brilliant declaration of inspiration, but you can sign and date, I have, on my other one. <laughs> um, that's really worth having you read through if you do order this pack because um, there's actually quite a lot of really good advice and things in there. Um, you also get this bonus gift, which is a sort of to-do pad. So that's got fun loads of little bits on there for you to fill out. Personally, I'm a stationery fiend. I love it with stationery. So this, um, this website, as I said, I've been using them for, since I started my Sewing World journey, which was October, 2017. So a year and a half now, which is slightly scary when you consider that I haven't lost all that much weight, but the reason why is because I've put quite a lot on, but glossing over that. Um, yeah, I've used these diaries from the start and I do find that I lose better when I do use them. So my kind of six month off plan period, um, I had diaries, but I didn't use them properly. I had weeks and weeks where I didn't fill them out. So it was a total waste of money, but I'm back on using them again now. So anyway, with Every single purchase, I think it's every single purchase, certainly every diary, you always get a lovely rose gold flamingo paper clip. So these are really cute. Their theme is very flamingo-y, I do like it. So here's the diary proper. Um, I'll just whiz you through it. You can choose the cover. They have a ridiculous choice of covers, so well worth um, finding. You can find like anything. I've had loads of different colors. This one will be my ninth diary. I think I've had this particular cover like four times, um, but I really like it. Make your dreams come true, and I love unicorns. So when you open the diary, you've obviously got a nice little conversion chart there. And the first thing that you see is that they now include stickers. You can buy stickers separately on their website. I did actually order some extra stickers for myself because I just, couldn't help myself, but um, this is the sticker page where you actually get two of them in your diary. Well, this is in the three months diary, so I assume that's why you get this amount. But basically loads of on-plan stickers, a few off-plan stickers, and um, you've got some workout stickers down the bottom. Now I work out most days, so I tend to save those when I've had a really, really good session or I've done something extra, like two things in one day instead of one. And then you've also got some little achievement stickers, which are really good. They've just got a little gap to fill in what you want. So for example, I have one on the first page of the diary that I'm using at the moment, and it was 
back on plan. So that was really nice, nice little motivator. Um, once you've gone past the sticker pages, you get to some about me pages. So you're gonna write down some goals, a bit about yourself when you started your journey. You've also got some uh, really good little questions here actually. These are, what do I like to do now? What can I enjoy more? What will motivate me? Non-scale goals, focusing and relaxing and unwinding. So they're re really good little things to have a think about. Give yourself half an hour, make a nice cup of tea. Incidentally, I'm sat here with a nice cup of tea that I'm about to pour. Um, I use my cafe chair for my loose teas. And um, this particular one is Minty Spice Sencha. Um, this is actually from Cindy's Tea. This is completely non-promoted, by the way. I'm just showing you which tea I'm drinking. So that's the one. Cindy's Tea, they do some really lovely loose leaf teas. So I do recommend them. I came across them at VegFest. But yeah, so get yourself a nice cup of tea, sit down for half an hour, have some you time because you deserve it, um, and fill out your diary. So you also got the bubble star page, which some of you will be familiar with as a concept, but basically you can choose what value your bubbles and stars have. I just do half a pound and a pound because that's fairly standard. You can colour them in when you lose weight. Space for before and after pictures. So this is, I'm going to do this for this each diary as it were. My friend has a secret picture that I haven't seen of me which I'll be comparing to in 12 weeks which I'm really terrified at but you know. Um, you've also got a measurements page to write down all your measurements, food values, so all your favourite sin things you can write in these pages here to remind yourself of the sin values but obviously do check up and make sure they're still accurate because sin values do change over time. Then we've got the weekly weigh-in pages, self-explanatory really <laughs> just to keep a record of your weekly weigh-ins. The next thing you've got is your weight graph. Again, self-explanatory. This isn't about a weight graph, it's about an amount loss graph. So um, as you lose, you're actually counting up the side how many pounds you've lost rather than how much weight you are, if you see what I mean. They also include a nice sleep tracker, which is really good because the more sleep you get, or the better sleep you get, the more weight you are able to lose in general. You've also got a treat tracker for all your sins and a lovely activity tracker. I use all of these, um, I find them really good, they keep me focused, so why not? There's a couple of recipe pages, you can write down your favourite Slimming World recipes, recipes from my channel, um, and um, shameless plug, and um, there's also a good little notes page there as well, for anything you want to include. Now, something else that they now include in the three month diary, which um, I'm not sure they used to, but that's cool, because I like anything extra, is a special 12 week countdown board. So you've literally, weeks one through 12, um, compare your starting and ending weight. On the back of this, you've got your own dream board. Um, so you can do anything you want on here, cut out things from magazines, draw pictures, put stickers, write yourself little quotes, anything you want that will inspire you and keep you focused. Where do you want to be? Where do you visualize yourself? So that's a really nice little thing that I hadn't actually come across before, so I haven't completed mine in my new diary yet, but I will be doing it because I think it's a valuable exercise. We do get onto the diary, but right at the back, I'll just show you, is a countdown and mood tracker. Yeah, so um, this literally is smiley, neutral or sad face each day, and you can sort of do a summary of your week and see how you felt in total, whether it's food related or not. I guess some things could affect how you um, eat or how you feel about food, so that's relevant. Now, the diary pages itself, this is what I really like. All the rest is like good extras. But the diary page itself is really, really well laid out. And um, this is the best diary I've seen. I've looked at lots of diaries online and the Slimming World's own diary. So, so sorry, Slimming World, but this one is better, way better. You can split your um, food into meals. You've got breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks. You've got your free food, speed food, healthy extras and treats, which is sins. Um, you've got a little countdown along here that you can tick as you use sins throughout the day. It does go up to 19 and then a plus sign. I get 20 a day because of my weight, but um, usually of course you get 15. So just ignore the ones after 15, it's easy as that. You can actually plan your meal in, so you can write what you want for breakfast and then you write the components up here for example, that's how I use it. And then you've got spaces to tick off your water, fruit and veg, and exercise minutes and amount of hours you slept. And then there's some extra bits along the bottom, stairs, climb steps. Hours 
the standing and how you feel on a score of one to 10. So that's it, but I really just wanted to share that with you because these diaries have proven valuable to me. This isn't an advertising slot, I'm not promoting the company. Well, I am, but only from my own experience. So <laughs> um, please do check them out if you want a little bit of motivation um, and you love stationery like I do. Um, as I said, they have actually given me a discount code for you guys. Um, I've not received any incentives, but if you do want to check their website out, it's fabulousplanning.co.uk. Use the discount code below if you're going to order anything from them and then let me know how you get on and if you like the diary because I love them and I'm not gonna stop using them. So back to the video. This is everything that you need to make the tofu quiche, or at least my version of a tofu quiche. We've got two packs of smoked tofu. Um, usually I would add a packet of silken tofu as well, but I don't have any, so we're just winging it. Um, a vegetable stock cube, garlic and onion powder, an onion, mushrooms, spinach, salt and pepper, I'm using smoked salt today, and the bacon pieces. These have been confirmed as um, free on Slimming World. On the app they are showing as free, so hold the presses, stop the phones, Giddy up your horses, get yourself down to Sainsbury's and buy 17 packs of them before I get there before you. So we're making a bacon, mushroom and spinach quiche. Quiche. Just showing you how I'm prepping myself so that all this can get going in one go. So I've got my onion chopped, uh, well sliced actually, I'm slicing it because I just felt like it. Um, and I've sprayed my pan with quite a lot of fry light. Um, and then once I get the onion going, we're gonna chuck in the bacon, bacon and uh, let that kind of cook as much as it can, probably five minutes or so. Then I'm gonna throw in the mushrooms. I haven't chopped them all because I'm not sure yet how many I need. So, and I'm also not sure if I wanna use mushrooms later in the week for something else. I kind of feel like I should just throw them all in. But then if I want them later in the week, I'll regret that. So, <laughs> um, yeah, we'll go from there. Um, and then, um, I'll add spinach right at the very end. And the onion and the garlic is gonna be for the, and the stock is for the actual tofu base, which I'll show you in just a sec. Make sure you break apart the onion when you're sauteing it. When the onion is golden, add in your bacon. Meanwhile, make your tofu base, so put in both packs of tofu into the blender, add one teaspoon of onion granules, one teaspoon of garlic granules, your stock cube, and some splashes of boiling water, or it could be cold, I'm sure it doesn't matter, and blend it for a really, really, really long time. Meanwhile, don't forget to keep stirring your onion and bacon mix, because it may well start to stick if you don't. And then add in your mushrooms. I did end up adding in the rest of the mushrooms in the packet because I like mushrooms. Your tofu is done when it's a really thick paste. You may have needed to add some more water during blending. I did, I think another two splashes. Add in all of your spinach and stir it really well so it wilts down nicely. I added about half a packet of basil to mine. I just pulled out the really big fat stalks and chopped the rest. Spray your pie dish with plenty of fry light, you don't want it sticking, then add in the filling. Next, add the tofu that was blended, mix it really, really well with the filling. It doesn't look like it will, but it will come together. Then when it does, just flatten it out completely like I've done here. And then optionally, you can top with some sliced tomatoes. This not only adds a bit of freshness, but it makes it look really nice too. Please excuse the sound of the washer in the background. Um, I'm being a productive person this morning, productive Polly. So um, the next recipe that we're gonna do while the quiche thing is in the oven, which I'm hoping is gonna turn out well. Otherwise, um, sorry for sharing a shitty recipe with you guys. So the next thing we're gonna do is um, this thing that I'm pretty sure I copied from a Slimming World book. You know when they release the new ones and the consultant hands it around the group and you all have a look and I take five million pictures, no copyright stolen whatsoever. Um, yeah, I didn't take a picture. I definitely wrote it down in my little notebook that I take to sessions. I am that sad person in the back taking notes, um, writing down ideas for my week ahead, etc., etc. whatever works for me. 
Um, so yeah, this is basically harissa aubergine and chickpeas, and it is quite literally as it says. So you saute onion, it's meant to be a red onion, but I've only got a white one, plus this little half <laughs> red onion, so I'm gonna saute them. And then you literally just add in like sliced aubergine, some harissa paste, which obviously needs to be sinned. I think it's a sin per tablespoon, but I will confirm. Um, and then a couple of tins of chickpeas and like mush it all around. So I figured, well, that's a really good base for something. As in, I can have it with, um, I can have it with something like pasta or rice or quinoa in the week, or I can maybe put it cold on a salad if I fancied it perhaps for lunch one day. Um, actually, I think that would be really nice. That's I might do that one day. So yeah, there's a few things you can do with it. Obviously you could bulk it out with some other veggies one day. Um, so yeah, I figured this is just a good base. Oh, there's probably garlic in it too. I haven't put it out, but yeah, let's do garlic in here as well because I like garlic. Um, yeah, and um, yeah, let's just do this and then it's something else that we've got ready in the week. Right, so just for posterity, um, this is the half a red onion, one giant white onion and three cloves of garlic from this big clove bulb here. The big one, I like the big ones. Um, yeah, so we're gonna get those sautéing in some fried light now. Sorry if you guys can hear the um, sizzling of this. Um, oh, I've got onion eyes. Um, I've got this on a very low heat going and um, it's just softening nicely. And I'm just going to add in some of the aubergine which I've chopped. Um, I mostly did it in half moons, but there are some quarters in there as well. For my just try and mix it about as best you can. It will take a while to start reducing down and softening. And if you need to, do add a splash of water to help uh, loosen things up. Okay, so we're doing a tablespoon of harissa paste and then a second tablespoon of harissa paste. Mix it all together, turn the heat down and let this sort of simmer away until everything's softened up and uh, reducing together nicely. Add in two tins of drained chickpeas. To try and help keep some moisture in while we cook this mixture down, I put the lid on and turn the heat right down. This should keep it nice and moist, moist, while um, cooking nicely and you can see the lovely steam there. Right, on to my third and final trick <laughs> um, of my completely unplanned random, let's prep some random things for meal prep. Um, this last one is, uh, I don't even know, it's like a soup, I guess, let's call it soup and I guess it's slightly Italian-y type thing, like a minestrone, but with no pasta or some other minestrone ingredients. So basically you want onion and garlic, obviously. But for stock, you can use normal stock, but I'm using these garlic and thyme stock pots and I'm gonna use two. Um, I've got some dried thyme, oregano and basil. Red wine and vinegar, very important for the end. This does add a nice little splash of flavor. If you don't have it, it's cool, but if you do, then do add it. Um, two tins of chopped tomatoes and tomato puree, two tins of butter beans. I'm gonna add a little bit of pearl barley and green lentils just to bulk it out. I've got three really big courgettes for scale. Here's my giant pool with a giant courgette in it. They're a bit crummy courgettes. They're kind of all lumpy, bumpy and horrible like this, but they were super cheap. They were like in nets in Tesco and they were about 62p each for two. So I thought that was quite good. Um, your fry light or equivalent, other brands are available. Obviously this is not fry light, this is the Audi one. You want some black kale and uh, obviously salt and pepper and garlic, I think I already said that. So yeah, that's everything that you need. Oh, if you have sun-dried tomato paste, throw some of that in if you wanna add some sins. I'm not, because I'm trying to keep it sin free, but um, I do actually have some in the cupboard, but I'm gonna um, not use it this time. But it will massively, uh, add a load of flavour. So just yeah. a quick interlude before we get started on the soupy thing. Um, I've taken the uh, aubergine chickpea thing off the heat and I'm just leaving the lid on just to keep some moisture in there. 
um, but that's just going to be left to cool a minute. I've also taken out my tofu quiche from the oven, but it's still quite wobbly and I've taken my oven glove off, so I'm not going to touch it. I was literally about to. Um, it's still quite wobbly, so I'm going to cover it with some foil and I'm going to put it back in on like 160 or 140, so quite a low heat to try and help it bake through a little bit more because um, I want it to be more solid than this. I'm such a pro, <laughs> not. Um, it just occurred to me that by doing this, I'm sealing moisture in, so I'm just gonna put some holes. I don't even know if this is the right thing to do, but basically, I don't want this to be wet, as it were. Um, oh, and if you're doing the same as me, I'm putting foil on, wear oven gloves, because I just really burnt my hand. Okay, you wanna put this on a really low heat, and uh, go from there really. I'd just like to say that such is my dedication this week to meal prepping that I'm actually still in my pajamas and my bobbly slippers. Once your onion and garlic is soft, add in half a cup of pearl barley. Plus half a cup of green lentils. Add in a load of water. I think I added about two and a half liters at this point. And then we're adding our herbs. One teaspoon of dried thyme. One teaspoon of dried oregano. and two teaspoons of dried basil. Add in your two stock cubes. Add about three to four tablespoons of tomato puree. Once all that's simmering, add in your courgettes. Add two tins of drained butter beans. As well as your two tins of chopped tomatoes. Fill each of the tins of chopped tomatoes with uh, half full with water. Swirl it about, that'll get the last of the juice out. And give everything a really, really good stir together. Make sure nothing's stuck to the bottom of the pan because the grains can tend to do that sometimes. And then we're just gonna pop the lid on and we're gonna turn the heat down really low and let it simmer for a good half hour, if not more. The quiche was in the oven for about another 20 minutes, maybe 25. And as you can see, it's now no longer wobbling in the middle. So that's much improved. It's time now to prep the kale for the soup. And I like to buy my kale in the full leaf because it's far easier to remove the stalk when the leaves are whole, as opposed to when you get the uh, chopped kale, which always, always, always has the stalks in. And if you want to go through and remove all the stalks, it takes about 15 hours per stalk. So it's much easier to buy it like this whole. And the way I do it um, is just to remove the center stalk. Then I lay it out in a line and chop it along sideways. So once you've got all the bits and you've torn out any manky bits, just stack them all up and chop them. As you can see, compared to supermarket chopped kale, this has no stalks. Once you have the kale all chopped nicely, you need to just give it a really good wash. Once you've washed it, just add it into the bubbling soup and it should wilt down quite nicely. You want to turn the temperature right down on the soup. Give it a really good stir. As you can see, mine's really thickened up now. And so I'm just going to add in some extra hot water 
just to thin it down a bit and make it go that little bit further. And here's everything all complete. I've got my Italian style vegetable and bean and grain soup in the background, my tofu crustless quiche, and my harissa aubergine and chickpeas. To finish off the soup, I was gonna add some red wine vinegar, but mine's gone all sedimenty, so I'm substituting sherry vinegar. Now you want one to two tablespoons, whether you use the red wine or the sherry. Just the one glug would have been fine in mine. We're all done and dished up. So I've got eight portions of the uh, Italian style soup, let's call it. Um, my quiche is in quarters, so I think that's a good portion. That's probably the best one I cut. Um, and then I've got a giant pot of this aubergine chickpea thing, um, which will make a good two or three portions, depending on how I decide to eat it. And when I have that, I will pair with fresh coriander. Um, obviously all of this is intended to go with more speed. The soup, not so much, but the tofu quiche, I would have it with salad probably. Um, maybe even some new potatoes for a dinner. This, like I said at the beginning, probably uh, pasta or rice or if you've got a healthy extra bee, you could have it in a wholemeal pita bread, which would be a really nice way of doing it. Maybe with some fresh greens, um, or even just serve it over the top of it, like a little um, kebab -y type thing. I don't really know. Um, but yeah, there's loads of ways that you can use this stuff. So this is just a way of quickly prepping for my week. It's taken me, I mean, it's about two hours since I started, but in the middle of that, I did go and uh, have a shower and cleanse myself. So, um, I mean, it's probably like an hour and a, well, not even an hour and a half of active work, really. So, uh, yeah, hope this has been helpful, giving you some ideas. Like I said, um, I did it totally off the cuff. So if these recipes are no good, I do apologize. Um, this is just me making stuff up based on my fridge, what I had in it, etc., etc. So hopefully it's given you some ideas at the very least. Um, thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time. Bye.